In this video, I'm going to show you how you can capture your mini DV tapes on a Mac using OBS Studios. Before you continue on, make sure to check out my previous tutorial. That tutorial will show you how to capture mini DV using QuickTime or iMovie. But if those two software doesn't work, come back to this video. Now here are some things I want you to be aware of before you try out one of these methods. So these methods might not work with your DV cam and also it won't capture in true DV resolution. So these are just basically workarounds if using iMovie or QuickTime did not work for you. So now we're going to talk about the equipment that you'll need and also how to set up OBS. Now, if you already have all the equipment and you've already set up OBS, feel free to skip this part of the video. So if you're using a USB-C Mac, that could be a USB-C MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, anything with the USB-C, you're going to need the Thunderbolt 3 adapter, followed by the Thunderbolt to Firewire adapter, a 9-pin to 4-pin Firewire cable as well. Now, if you're using an older MacBook Air or MacBook Pro or even iMacs that are pre-USB-C, then you're just going to need the Thunderbolt to Firewire adapter and also followed by a 9-pin to 4-pin Firewire cable. Now, if you're using one of the old unibody MacBook Pros, the one that still had the DVD drive in it, then it should have a built-in Firewire port in there. In that case, you're just going to need a 9-pin to 4-pin Firewire cable. Once you have the necessary adapters and cables, it's time to plug in that camcorder into your Mac. So what we're going to do now is head on to obsprojects.com and download OBS Studios. For my case, I'm going to download the Mac OS version. And you're going to pick between an Intel Mac or an Apple Silicon Mac. So if you have an Intel Computer Mac, go ahead and select Mac OS Intel. If you have a M1 or M2 Mac, then you're going to pick Apple Silicon. In my case, my test machine is an Intel Mac, so I'm just going to click on the Intel version and download it to my computer. Once the download has been finished, let's look for the DMG and it could be in your downloads area or your desktop. In my case, it's on downloads for my computer, so I'm going to click on the DMG. And all I do is to install OBS Studios on a Mac, I just drag the OBS icon into the Applications folder. And we're going to wait for it to install. And once it has been installed, just go ahead and double click on OBS. And we're going to wait for the application to launch. Now you might get this screen that says that OBS would like to access the microphone. OBS needs to access the microphone to enable audio input. In this case, just go ahead and click OK. And this is optional if you want to get automatic updates. In my case, I'm just going to click on Don't Check. And when you first open up OBS for the first time on a computer, you might get this configuration wizard window. And you could definitely just pick one of these options if you want OBS to create a default optimized settings for you, or you can always customize it later on. So I'm just gonna click cancel. Now click on settings, go to output, and you wanna change this output mode to advanced. And let's go to recording. And what we want to do right now is kind of change the recording settings. So you could change the recording path. For my case, I'm just going to keep it in the movies folder. The recording format, I will make it into MPEG-4. Video encoder, I'm going to select X264. Now everyone's computers could be a little bit different. Now if you're using a faster Mac, I will suggest you might want to use the hardware encoder. But for my case, I'm using a slower one, so I'm just going to use the 264. I'm going to keep the audio encoder just the way it is. Again, one audio track. I'm not going to rescale the output. And right here, you get to control the rate or the bit rate of your video. So it all depends, again, on your computer. You're going to have to play around the settings to see what works for your computer. In my case, I'm just going to keep it as CBR 2500 kilobits per second. Again, it all depends on your computer. And the CPU usage preset, you can set to either very fast, that's by default, 
or you could go to even ultra fast or super fast. So I'm going to go to ultra fast and higher equals less CPU. And after that, I'm just going to click apply and then click OK. The next thing you want to do is you want to plug in the 9 pin or 4 pin Firewire cable into the Firewire DV port on your camcorder. And you're going to have to look for it depending what model your camcorder is. And make sure you're plugging it in the right direction. I'm just going to plug it in right there. And after that, you're going to plug in the Thunderbolt 3 or the Thunderbolt to Firewire adapter into your Mac. And finally, to make sure to turn on your camcorder in the VCR mode. All right, so here I am in OBS Studios. And first thing I want to make sure is I have at least one scene in my area. And if you don't have a scene, you just click on this plus sign right here to add one scene. Once you have at least one scene, you're just going to go to your sources area with a plus sign. Click on video capture device and I'm just going to rename this to DV and then click OK. And then I'm going to select my DV camera. And you're going to see that it's going to use presets and you're going to choose a resolution. Now, unfortunately, you can't choose the DV resolution. The closest you could go is either 960 by 440, it's either 960 by 540, or 1280 by 720. And for my camera, if I choose 960 by 540, I get these weird green bars right here. And unfortunately, that just doesn't work for me. What I can do is I could go to transform, edit transform, and go to the crop section. I, I could try cropping those green bars next to it. But again, you're not going to get the full correct resolution. So for my demonstration purposes, so what I'm going to use, I'm going to use 960 by 540. It's the closest I could get to the DV resolution. I'm going to click OK. And also in my settings, I want to go to video and set the output scale to 960 by 540. Change the base canvas as well. Matches evenly. And now I want to crop out those green bars. I'm going to go edit, I'm going to crop out those green bars. And you want to be careful when you're cropping, you don't want to accidentally crop out some details. Close, and I'm just going to make it right there somewhere in the middle. There you go, once you have all that set up, you also want to go in the audio mixer area. And under the DV audio source, you want to click on the advanced audio properties just click on the three dots to get advanced audio properties and in the dv area under audio monitoring you want to select monitor and output you'll select that if you want to hear it while you're capturing it and also going to uncheck all these other additional audio tracks we kind of only need one and I can click on close and now i'm going to hit start record and then I'm going to press the play button on my DV cam. Now it's capturing. Now for some reason, if you don't see this monitoring, meaning that you have to kind of play around with this resolution thing again. It's very finicky. There you go. So now it's capturing. So I have to play around the resolution to get my audio back. Now, I don't know if it's related to my camera, but it could be your camera as well. So if you do encounter that, you need to play the resolution to get back the audio. And once you finish recording, just click stop recording, go to your movies folder or wherever you record it, and you can play back the video. Now this playback is a little choppy because I'm using QuickTime to screen capture my computer. And when I'm using QuickTime to screen capture an OBS, recording uh, my computer does lag so you might see a little lag here yeah, so it does show a 960 by 540 now the next part of this video I want to show you the actual audio glitch uh, this is the glitch that I was 
having earlier where I had to change the resolution to get the audio back. So again, I already have one scene and I already have a, I already have one scene that I need to add a source. So I'm gonna go to video capture and I'll create a new one called DV. I'm gonna select my ZR40 device and I'm going to pick 960 by 540, click OK. Go to edit. I'm just gonna get rid of those green little bars next to it. And also I wanna go to audio mixer, click on the little three dots, go to advanced audio property. Under DV, go to monitor and output. And I'm gonna get rid of all these additional tracks right here. And I'm gonna play it back and see what happens if I could hear the audio. So as you can see, can't hear anything right now. So I'm gonna pause my recording. I'm going to pause the play playback, go back to the properties. So go to go back to properties, just click on the little gear button again. I'm going to change the resolution. One, two. Now I can hear it. Okay, and then click OK. So you can see it's a very buggy solution. So I'm going to start recording. And now I can hear it. I can hear it play back. So here's another option. Instead of using FireWire, we can use a USB capture device that has a composite video or an S-video input that we can use. What you will need is the AV cable that came with your camcorder. And then you'll decide either to use the composite video or the S video. In my case, I'm going to use S video. I'm going to plug in the AV cable that came with the camera. And then I'm going to plug in the S video cable from the camera to the adapter. And I'm also going to plug in the left and right audio, which is the left, the white and red cable. Those two cables are from the AV cable that came with the camera plug the adapter to my computer so again just to recap if you are using the usb capture device you're going to be either using the composite which is the yellow one or the s video so then we're going to open up obs and we already have a scene so we're just going to add our capture device and the device will be named av2 usb 2.0 i'm going to uncheck use preset and select 720 by 480. now if you are in a different region like the PAL region, the resolution might be different. But unfortunately, this particular USB capture device, it doesn't let me type in a custom one. Next up, I need to add the audio input as well. So I'm going to go to the plus sign again, go to audio input capture, just click OK. And then I'm going to select the USB 2.0 mic. And after that, I want to go to the advanced audio properties. And once again, make sure I have the track selected. And again, I only need one track, so I'm gonna uncheck all the other ones. And now, make sure to press play on your DV cam. And while it's playing, you can also monitor it as well. So you just go to audio monitoring, uh, monitor and output, and then start recording. So after recording, I was able to play back the video and also wanna check out the resolution and it did capture at 720 by 480 but it's not going through firewire dv it's just going through either your s video connection or composites now sometime when you're recording with obs you might see this encoding overload and error message and it looks something like this uh, you'll also notice that your recording might be a little bit choppy as well and in order to fix that you're gonna have to go to settings and then you're gonna go to output the recording tab go all the way down and play around the bitrate and see which one works for you but this will really depend on your computer so play around with that setting so here's another method you can try the vlc method so first thing you want to do is you want to go to the vlc website and download the program and install it we're going to be using the firewire uh, connection for video but for audio, you either have to use a USB audio capture device or use the audio portion from the USB video capture device that we used earlier. Open up VLC, go to File, Open Capture Device, 
go to capture input devices and under video select your mini dv cam and under audio select the audio adapter now don't be fooled if you see your dv cam even though you're able to choose your dv cam it's not going to output any sound unfortunately now at this point when you see the url go ahead press play on your dv cam and it will start playing back now it is kind of glitchy i did get a lot of like choppiness and if i go to playback and i hit record it is able to record and it does save it to my movies folder as an avi file but when i look at the codec details it doesn't output the correct resolution so vlc is another method you can look at but it did not work for me now there is another software on the mac that you can try as well it is called lightflix and it looks like it's able to capture from uh, mini dv camps and there is a free version you could try out uh, the free version does leave a watermark so you could try out the free version before you purchase a license for that software so those are the other methods in capturing dv tape on a mac but i want to know what are your thoughts is there another process that you try uh, what other methods have you tried before leave your comments below I'll also leave links to all the equipment that I use and also the software as I use as well. And some of the links in the description are affiliate based. So if you do use that link to buy something, I do get a small commission. If you want to learn how to digitize your VHS tapes or even burn audio CDs, you can check out those tutorials right here.